10 Nintendo games that you've never heard of. With 678 licensed games in the US, there's a good chance that some of them may fall through the cracks. I mean, not every game can be like Mario 3 or Mega Man. Let's see if you've heard of any of these. And if any of the games on this list is a game you've never heard of, you have to subscribe. That's the kind of stuff you're gonna get here. The idea for this video literally started when I shared this photo of Tombs and Treasures for the NES. It's a personal favorite of mine. And so many of the comments mention that they've never heard of this game. Well, it's pretty neat. It plays like a PC game of the time, point and click style, but instead of like using the cursor to move around like you would with Shadowgate, it just kind of goes through the highlighted areas. Now from there you can look at things, you can talk to people, you can take things, you can use items, you know. Your window when you're in this mode where it shows like the graphics of what you're looking at isn't as big as, let's say, a Shadowgate, so sometimes it's a little hard to see like what you're looking at exactly. But when you leave the buildings there is this overworld map that you can kind of walk around to where you want to go next. It's unfortunate the game this kind of complex uses a password system. Oh my goodness, I'll never be able to get that down on the first try. Of course, with today's technology, you can either just take a photo with your phone, or, I mean, if you're playing through emulation, you can always save state it or something. I always thought this game just kind of had a kind of a cool look to it as it is. But unlike Shadowgate and some of the other games, it's not just exploration, there's also fighting to be had. That's right, you can actually fight enemies in this game. The fighting is turn-based, kind of RPG style, and I'm in a place right now where I shouldn't be, so I shouldn't be fighting. <laughs> Fortunately, you can always pick up where you left off. Not that that's going to do me any good in this playthrough. With the original concept from Falcom, which is one of my favorite companies from the day, Tombs and Treasures, man, if you haven't checked it out, I think it's super awesome. One of the most generic sounding games on the NES is Supercars. This is a real game. And once you kind of choose the basic things of what you want to do in this game, well, it plays like that kind of Super Sprint style tank controls, drive around on these tracks, and uh, kind of drift around corners if you can, or just drive around corners. <laughs> there were a few games on the market that were like this, so it wouldn't be uncommon for this game to kind of slip through the tracks. Or cracks, sorry. The pun not intended. This one, about as generic as they get, but there's still some fun to be had with this game. Supercars might be a game you've never heard of. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, well, it's not technically one of the most unknown games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It came out by Taito, it played kind of interesting. I mean, there's little different gameplay styles, like, you know, this, like including the action part on the boat, and kind of cool to see things moving around, and you're kicking guys out of the way and stuff like that, too. But that's not the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade I'm talking about. I'm talking about this Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade from Ubisoft. That's right, for the Nintendo Entertainment System, there is an Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, two games from the same thing, but one from Taito, one from Ubisoft. Even the labels are almost exactly the same. And then when you see this game in action, oh boy, okay. Well, I mean, it looks like a game that was probably made for like the Game Boy or Game Boy Color, and then they ported that version to the NES. Not the worst game in the world, it really isn't. It just, for its time, it could have been a lot better. It just kind of has a, I don't know, a unique, it just has that Game Boy look to it, you know what I mean? I don't know if it's because there's an extra layer of outline between your dark outline to a bright outline. It just looks Game Boy-ish, I don't know. You, know. you pick up these torches to relight up the room and all that. Kind of a difficult game too, I never really put a whole lot of time and effort into this game. Didn't really feel like it. Yeah, they made two Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade games for the NES. Isn't that crazy? How about Alfred Chicken? This is a late release game for the NES, and it plays very... Ah, European is the best way I can describe it. Again, not a bad game. I mean, it, it kind of tells you what you need to do. You, you're, you play the role of Alfred Chicken, and you can, you know, attack these enemies from above and pick up these jewels, because sure, why not? I mean, the rooms are nice and big, you know, nice big rooms to explore and still have that platforming element to it. When you die, you just turn into a puffball full of feathers, which I think is hilarious, and I think it's great. I love the animation in this. Kind of makes sense that a late-release game, you know, the Super Nintendo's already out, so why would people go back to their old NES? Well, this game existed, and you know maybe thanks to them for you know having this game be a game that came out after the Super Nintendo came out. Right on, Alfred Chicken, check it out. But Alfred Chicken was a late release game. We even have games like King's Knight that came out in 1989 from Squaresoft. What? The company that brought you Final Fantasy? I mean, you'll remember Squaresoft is also the company that brought you Rad Racer. This game's interesting because it plays more like a vertical shooter and a unique one at that. You can shoot through the hills. Now you can actually jump on top of these hills too. I like shooting through them because that's where you'll find all your power-ups and stuff like that. Enemies are trying to get in your way and you're just trying to make it to the end of the stage. Sometimes this invisible maze type thing pops up so you gotta plan your route accordingly because, you know, the, the screen's gonna keep scrolling and if you're stuck and you're pinned, that's game over for you. Fortunately, you can find these power-ups that'll help you out here. And what makes this game interesting is every stage 
features a different character that you play as. And you're trying to get all of your characters to the end of the stage, and I'll show you why in just a moment. You even have like a little mini boss fights type thing. <laughs> Fine. You go down there and, you know, have extra challenges along the way too. It's always just kind of cool to see what's going to come up next, especially the first time you play this game, you know? You even play as this little monster lizard type thing. And if you run out of health, well, unfortunately, then that's not going to help you out near the end of the game. Fun little island level here. I didn't quite make that one either. But then once all of your troops are where they need to be, then you can help save the princess. And unfortunately, all my other characters died, so it's just this knight that I'm playing as on this fifth stage. But if you do happen to make it all the way through, then you get to play as all of the characters all at once, and you can kind of, like, shift them around in rotation with these power-ups and everything. So you can just plow your way through and, um, like, you know, like I said, help, help the princess. King's Knight, an earlier NES game, maybe it's one you've never heard of. Another racing game in Race America, and this one actually has kind of a cool thing to it. Two player if you'd like, now you play as yourself, but you choose your opponent. And once you hop in your car and get ready for position, the driving's interesting because you're going and then you have to let go of the gas to shift gears. Usually in other games you just have to hit a button, but this one you kind of have to actually do what you do. You <laughs> let go of the gas to shift gears. Now he's clearly taking a lead on this one here. But if you get close to him, it turns into this overhead thing where you can overtake them. You can see the cameraman helicopter there, which is kind of cool. And then now you're on the top screen, but you still got to watch out because there's still other cars in the way. <laughs> Race America. Yeah, this game existed. Oh, it's one of the all-time classics that pretty much everyone had in their collection, TNC Surf Design. Yeah, there's a skateboarding level, which I always thought was kind of fun, and even the surfing level, too. It's like two games in one. But did you know they made a second TNC Surf Design game based just on Thrilla Gorilla with TNC 2 Thrilla Surfari? This one even has, like, a story mode and everything. Combining both, you play as Thrilla Gorilla, who is probably the most popular character from the TNC Surf Design characters. But this time you're skateboarding. And this game is super hard. <laughs> I can never make it almost anywhere in this game because I keep dying. But that aside, this is a real game. So yeah, they did make a TNC 2. The first one's still better, but this one exists. How about Ultimate Air Combat? This is a game that flies under a lot of radars, no pun intended. You choose your stage, you choose your jet, which is kind of nice, you choose your loadout, and, well, I mean, it plays like a first-person view firing game. Now, of course, you immediately think of Top Gun, right? When you see something like this, you immediately think of Top Gun. Uh, well, this game's way better than Top Gun, because you can actually do, like, barrel rolls and flips, and uh, you're just trying to shoot... I mean, it's, it's, it's dogfighting. You're just trying to shoot down these other planes here when you can. You get your radar that's going to help you out on the side. You can fire at them, get your missiles and everything. Ultimate Air Combat, pretty neat. Might be worth checking out. People saying, I've never heard of that game, comes up sometimes when I talk about videomation. Mario Paint, it isn't, unfortunately, because you only have your D-pad, so that draws you eight directions. You can't really do a whole lot with this game. Yeah, you can draw and erase. Fancy, fancy. You got your little other things you can do, like the line art, the change the palettes, fill in stuff. And it's called videomation because there's a select few bits of animation that you can add to your photo. So you paint your picture, and then you put the animation thing on top of it. And that's about all it's good for. Not great, but it does exist. Because I was keeping this list 10 NES games that you've never heard of, a few honorable mentions would be Jimmy Connors Tennis. Well, it's a late release tennis game, but if you like tennis, this is actually one of the better tennis games. It actually moves nice and fast. Some of the, some of the tennis games are just so slow. The ball lobs, the ball just going. This is about the right speed for a tennis game, for like a video tennis game anyway. How come we never got a video pickleball game? That would've been fun. The Mutant Virus, a little more of an uncommon game. You have to stop the viruses from spreading, as you would imagine. As you're moving around from room to room, these viruses start spreading, and you just have to kind of cleanse them or clean them up, whatever you're trying to do in this game. But when, once you get it all happened and cleared up and everything, then, uh, then it goes away and you move on to the next room. It's kind of a fun game. Ninja Crusaders may have been a game you've never heard of until you've seen this channel, because I love this game, and I've mentioned it on several videos in the past. It is a one-hit kill ninja game. So watch out for that. You can pick up new items along the way. But one of the fun of this game is, depending on what item you have, you can transform into a different creature, a different character, a different animal. And that's how you get through this game, is by doing things like that. It's kind of fun just to see what different weapons will turn you into what different animals. But yeah, I'm a big fan of Ninja Crusaders. A game like Puznik, which is, again, by Taito, not the best puzzle game or best puzzle concept in the world. You just have to shift these pieces as gravity falls to make them fall on top of each other. I could have seen this game more as like a mini game in an RPG or something like that, where it's like, oh no, we have to solve the puzzle to get to open the door kind of thing. I could have seen that with this game. Unfortunately, that is the game. 
<laughs> so I mean, maybe that's good news. I have played this game quite a bit, but it's, you know, maybe not as much. Not as much as I should have, anyway. There are two different puzzle games in this. There's that one I just showed you, then this one that you kind of choose which direction the gravity falls, and then you have to clear out all the pieces. If you leave any pieces, well, it's game over, and you gotta, you know, try again later anyway. Puznik, it's interesting, but it's a game that not a lot of people have heard of. And then just to change things up a little bit, we have Nintendo World Cup, which is a game you probably have heard of, but maybe you skipped over it because it's a soccer game. Well, it's a soccer game by Technos, which means if you're into games like Super Dodgeball, if you're into games like River City Ransom, you'll recognize the characters in this game. It's a soccer game by Technos, so it's a fun soccer game. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's because you have these characters and you have like, I love, I love their facial animations. Like when they, you know, when they slide out or get attacked or something like that. Decent soccer game too. It's just, it's fun. I, I like the, uh, the Technos games that look like this, the Kunio style games anyway. They probably would have sold more copies if Nintendo World Cup had the Technos looking characters on the front of it. But alas, here we are. Kid Clown in Nightmare World. Nightmare World, that's right. This is a late release game by Kimco. Super fun platformer. This is one of those games, it goes for a pretty penny nowadays. However, if you get a chance to play it, you can also just play it through any means you find necessary to play these games, you'll be good to go. You got your balloons, that's your primary weapon of attack. And in blowing the balloons, you can also safely float down, which is kind of nice. The balloons also make it so you can safely float down, get a little bit more leap to your jump. The balloons don't last on the floor very long, but you can also jump on them once they're on the ground. Yeah, they'll kind of pop you up uh, to where you need to be. Cartoony action platformer, you got the boss scenes and everything, they got the boss fights, gotta love those in these style games. You got your little mini games of chance where it turns turns into a, uh, almost like a shooting gallery. Shooting gallery where you get your uh, upgrades and stuff. You can see the stages you gotta go to. Hard game to find now and it's not cheap. Kid Clown in Nightmare World. True story, I sold my copy of this game for like 50 bucks a few years ago. And then the next year it just skyrocketed in price. So, <laughs> ah, these things happen. What are some other Nintendo games that nobody's talking about? Let me know in the comments.